Relieving Anxiety with Calm Strips founder Michael Malkin. Episode 140 on the Alternative Health Tools podcast, where together we discover and share new alternative health tools and resources from alternative healthcare practitioners and experts. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Alternative Health Tools. This is Kim Shea, your host from this side of the pond in Southern California. It is Wednesday, May 26, 2021, and I get to talk to Michael Malkin today. He is the owner of Calm Strips, a product that is really very interesting, and I'm excited to introduce it to you. So welcome, Michael, to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, it means an awful lot to me and uh, excited to, to, to talk to you today. Thank you. Tell me about your background. Yeah, it's it's kind of a, a funny story. You know, I, I spent before starting Comstrips, which I did uh, last year, I worked for uh, 13 years as a retail manager for Apple. And so that, that's kind of my background. Before that, I was a, a school teacher for a year. That was not my best year. I love kids. I have two kids myself, but uh, teaching in school was not not my forte. And before that, in, in college, I went to Old Dominion University. But uh, that's kind of my background before starting Calm Strips. Um, actually, it's kind of interesting. I don't know if you've ever been, if, if anyone out there has ever been in an Apple store, uh, it mm-hmm. can get really busy, uh, at least pre-pandemic. Like if you think of like a busy store, usually people think of the Apple store. Oh, right. I kind of, kind of deal with anxiety um, like social anxiety, situational anxiety. And I find that for me, like what helps me to kind of calm down or to kind of ground in that moment is um, like tactile, like touch. And so, you know, I was looking, you know, for something for myself on those busy days when we get busy, I would get really anxious and I would start kind of drumming my hands like this a lot. And people would be like, are you a drummer? I was like, no, I'm not a drummer, but I just need something like to get that energy out. And that's kind of where the idea for calm trips came from because someone said, Oh, you know what you could do? You could, you could wrap some uh, like painter's tape around your finger and kind of use that as like a sensory touch thing. And Mm. I did that and actually found that really helped a lot. Like it was actually like kind of in those moments, it it was helpful for me. The downside of that is, well, number one, you have to wear painter's tape on your finger, which <laughs> kind of looks a little silly. And second, like your fingers get sticky and it's it's not great uh, visually. So I was like, well, maybe there's something here because like I, I can't be the only person who needs something tactile like this that you can bring with you anywhere. So I started to kind of, I spent about a year, like most of 2019, like sourcing, like we looked at like tons of different manufacturers. We looked into the science more and we kind of came up with like a product. So we're like, okay, comp strips, you know, and for me, I always have my phone with me. I think most people now have their phone with them all the time or they're uh, are working on their laptop. And so these are like sensory adhesives. You can stick them on back of your phone, you can stick them on your laptop so that when you do need that kind of sensory, that tactile stimulation, they're there for you. And we started out originally with a texture we called soft sand, which is kind of this um, kind of grainier, but still soft texture, which has been really great. People really liked it. We just recently rolled out one called um, River Rocks, which is um, a bit bumpier. That was our number one request. If you want something that was even more kind of textured. And so we, we released that uh, recently. They're really pretty strips. If, when when you can, I'll put the, the address in the show notes, but it's called comstrips.net. And you can go on there and look at all the different designs and everything. And they're beautiful. And, and they just look like you've got a really neat sticker on the back of your phone. It's, I mean, you'd never know what it was for. Yeah. And I think that was like one of the things that was really important to us when I use the royal we a lot. A lot of this is just me. But when we when we were uh, I get it. We when, all we were, <laughs> when we were designing the the product, I think something that was really important to us was that you know a lot of the sensory stuff that's out there. Not that it's not great stuff and it's helpful, but a lot of it, like fidget spinners, fidget cubes, things like that, um, they're either kind of toys or they're clunky and cumbersome. And it's another thing you have to remember to bring with you. So it's like, oh, I forgot my cube or oh, I forgot that. And plus in a lot of 
situations, it's not, I don't want to say socially acceptable is not the right way to put it, but it's like, if I was it, if I was working in the Apple store, I don't think I could like bust out my, my, my fidget cube, like for example, but I can have my phone in my pocket. I can have the comm strip kind of on my phone. So for people who, you know, want something they can always have with them, I think it's really effective. And so that's why we want to make it really pretty too, because it's one of those things where we do have solid colors for people who just want something super discreet. But like you said, I think for people, some people view it as, it's great that it's discreet and it's pretty and it kind of can kind of stay. But a lot of people, we, we just actually got a, a testimonial or, or an email from a customer a couple of days ago that was like, you know, people see them and they're jealous because my laptop is so colorful. Like they just like the style, like they just like the designs. And so that's not our intent. Um, but I think if you're going to have something with you all the time, having it look uh, cool is a, is a nice byproduct, is a nice feature. Yeah, I think you bring up a good point too, because if I was at some type of a, a meeting and I, I, you know, like some executive meeting, I'm going to sit there playing with my fidget spinner. It's a little more obvious as opposed to just having something on my phone that I can just be touching or have it quietly in my pocket where it's pretty sleek. So I think it's, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. And I think from a design standpoint, we also wanted to kind of bring in like all of our designs are kind of inspired by like calming scenes in nature or calming experiences and things like that, where it can be something where it can kind of ground you back into that moment. Like we have some people, some people will just like use it, like close their eyes and kind of just use the sensory part of it. I think we do have people as well who've, who've written us who say, well, actually, I, I really like the design because it kind of can ground me into like a sunset or, or a night sky or, or kind of a calm experience that they've had in the past. And so we try and tie that in where it's not just, here's a design that's just a ton of different, different colors. I think it's designed to be kind of from a color palette um, and from an experience standpoint, something that can kind of tie in uh, to calm experience maybe people have had in their, in their past. I like that then. So it's not just for anxiety, but it is also for, it could be used for meditative purposes, try and help you just become very present of what's happening right now. Yeah, I am someone, and I know there's a lot of people who share this with us as well. I'm someone who I, I have very difficult time sitting still. Uh, like just in general, it's, it's just kind of something I, I have a hard time with. So something like sitting still for 10 minutes and meditating is something that is difficult for me. But if I can sit down and kind of I have my my calm trip, and I can kind of you know be listening to. We're not associated with the Calm app, but I use the the Calm app um, like to listen to a meditation, do that for for five or ten minutes, and this can kind of help me stay still and present in the moment. That's something that is um, that that works well for me. And then as well, if I'm working or doing something else, you know, some people will, some people use these just in terms of like we're talking about like grounding or anxiety. We have people who use them for um, like focus, like as a focus thing when they're um, to the, can help them if they're you know sitting at work all day and it kind of can help them focus on the the task at hand through kind of the tactile sensory processing. And then the other part of it that we I'll be honest when I when I created the product, this was not my intention. It wasn't like, oh, this was a brilliant idea that I came up with. It was actually kind of by putting it out there and then people giving us the feedback. But because the the adhesive is reusable, I'm showing it to you, but obviously the listeners are not going to get it. it um, you can kind of pick at the edges and then kind of press it back down. So we've had a, a lot of people reach out to us who say, you know, I've had issues with like picking up my skin or pulling at my hair and I can kind of replace that kind of repetitive behavior by kind of picking at the comm strip. And like, I was like, okay, that how many people are there out there who really use it that way? But we were surprised. Like there's a lot of people who are using it that way. And we actually recently partnered with um, a foundation called the Picking Me Foundation, um, Lauren McKinney, who runs that. She's really uh, an awesome uh, lady as well. And she kind of reached out to us and was like letting us know, hey, you know, comm trips are kind of uh, something that people are talking about within our community and people are using. So I think it's something that, you know, it, it's kind of a tool. We have a, a, I had a way that was like, this is how I use it. I think that as we kind of put it out there, more and more people are exposed to it and use it. I think we're kind of learning different ways that people are using it out there in the in the world. 
That's that's really interesting. So let me let's let's describe it because people can't see it. So it's basically like a band aid. Would you say yeah, about that shape and size? Yeah, it's like three point two inches by zero point eight inches. So it's kind of small. It's it's designed to be. It's basically the size of on a like a thirteen inch laptop. Like basically the size between the trackpad and the uh, and the keyboard. Okay, uh, that was not. That's kind of semi intentional. Um, also, originally when I was working on it, we talked earlier about how I would wrap the carpenter's tape, uh, painter's tape around my finger at work. And originally I was like, oh, maybe this could be something where you could put it on your phone or you could like wear it on your finger if you wanted to as well. And we couldn't find an adhesive that would do both. So it, if you wanted to mm. wrap it around your finger, it would like flip out. Like, um, if you did, like, it wouldn't stick to itself. Okay. Um, or you could have something that would work. So we were like, I think more people are going to want to put it on something than put it, like, wrap it around their finger. But it was kind of in that mindset when we were, when I was originally working on it was that it would be the right size that if you wanted to wrap it around your finger, you could, but it also would fit, like, on the back of a phone or on the back of a laptop. But yeah, I would say it's, it's kind of, um, yeah, about the size of, of a band maybe a little bit smaller than that and maybe a little bit wider. Okay. Yeah. And and so for you, it fits on a phone, but I'm thinking like if I had a child who was having some anxiety at school, I could even put it onto a, a rock or a like a um, tongue depressor or something like that. I mean, I could find something else I could stick it to that they could carry it in their pocket and if they we, didn't have a phone. Um, we actually, this is like super recent, like just in the last week or two, because we had so many people asking for so and well, when you buy comp strips, we send out a little email that's like, hey, welcome to your comp strips. Here's different ways that people use them. Here's what you can expect. So when they arrive, you kind of know what it's all about. One of our customers made like a custom, like a necklace that she would wear that it was like the right size for the comp strip and she would wear it. And like in the email, like we had as a joke, like we were like, here's different places you can put your comp strip, like on a laptop, on your phone, here. Like the last one was like, you could put on a custom necklace if you wanted to do it, like one of our customers did. And we just put it there as a joke because we were like, nobody's going to really want that. And then we had a lot of people reach out and they were like, can I buy that necklace? And we're like, no, we don't do that. <laughs> um, and then uh, Lucy, who is our communication public relations director, she actually owns and operates kind of her own business. Uh, in parallel with comp strips, it's called Five and Eight Designs, and she does like um, hand stamping of, of like metal. So we found these. Uh, your viewers aren't going to be able to see it, but I can show one to you. It's it's these little um, kind of hand stamped, cold processed little carry tags that you can you know use as a keychain or like we we include like a lobster clip so you can clip it to like a backpack or or stuff like that. And those have been really um I was not expecting them to be as popular as they've been, but I think that's a, another way is you know you can kind of um clip it on a backpack or or like you said like if, if, a, if you have a, a child who wants to bring it but they don't have a phone obviously that's another way that you can kind of carry it around. Yeah so that's like a what you're showing is like kind of a large larger dog tag that that would have the dog's name on or something like that, but something like that size. And so then you could just cut the comp strip, right? Is that what yeah. you're saying? And so then fit it one, on there? This is a circle. And we do have, uh, even though the name is comp strips, we do have circular ones. Oh, you well. have a circle one. And then we, okay. do have, uh, we do have one that is also uh, for the full size comp strip. So if you're looking for, I don't have one within reach of my arm, okay. but I understand. Um, you can use it. Um, if you're looking for one for the strip itself, you can also, uh, we have a, a tag for that as well. That's really neat. Those are great ideas. And I know, I know you were saying that the necklace seemed like kind of a joke, but um, I know there's a necklace going around right now that has a, it's a breathing device. I'm not really sure, but it, it's a long yeah. piece of metal that hangs down. Yeah, so the, I think yeah. it's becoming more acceptable now yeah. to have whatever you need with you uh, and wear it. So can I take a quick aside on that? Because it's, Absolutely. It's, it's actually a funny story. So that I know exactly what you're talking about because it's, it's, it's made by a company called Kumo, K-U-M-O. And I know because I started doing um, like research on all the different stuff that was out there and I got an ad for it and I clicked on it and I like was like reading about it, but I was like, now every once in a while I get the ad for it. And so it's like, I think it's a really cool thing. Like it's a necklace that helps you kind of regulate your breathing. But I think what's really funny about it is that like now that I'm kind of 
that I do com strips, I think like maybe my search terms that I look for and things like that have changed to where now I get like a lot of ads and stuff served to me that's for other things in this market where I, if I was seeing that stuff before, I wasn't cognizant of it. But I feel like now, like the nature of the way that your like search terms and everything gets tied tied back in is like now I'm seeing that stuff more and more and more. I don't know if it actually exists more and more, but I think I'm just seeing it more, more and more and more. Yeah, well, they, they're watching you. They know what you like, they know what you're seeing, and they want to target you. So that makes sense. But I think it's nice. I think it's nice that it's more socially acceptable to have all this. So you were not specifically looking for a product that would help somebody with um, autism or something like that. You were just coming up with something that seemed like it would be nice. So it wasn't necessarily scientifically research-based. It's just that you're getting feedback saying you're meeting all these needs, even though that wasn't necessarily your goal. Is that correct? Yeah, and I think that that's, that's right on. And I think we're seeing it, you know, we have a lot of um, teachers and parents who've, who've reached out. So like, this started really like small, like this is like, we're still a small company. Like I'm, I'm in our office. Like this is like, we rent a little corner office in a bigger like office park. So we're, we're, we're still a small, but you know, hopefully growing fingers crossed uh, company. But I think it was going back to my Apple days, but um, Steve Jobs had this great analogy when he talked about the Apple II, where it was like a, an upside down pyramid. So like the engineers at Apple made this product and then they put it out in the world. And then people who didn't know how to build the computer, but they knew how to write software, made these programs and they, you know, released like a word processor, for example. And then people bought that and they, they didn't know how to make the word processor or how to make the hardware, but they knew how to like write a letter and they could do that on the computer and it kind of went up and up and up into like education. So I, I think not certainly not on that scale, but I kind of think of it the same way, which is like we put this kind of thing out into the world and I, like it's something I made for myself. And I think, you know, I did you spent the time and kind of did the research in like sensory processing and, and, and all those kind of things. I feel like I'm reasonably well versed to be able to talk to it, but it certainly wasn't my initial intention. But I think we put this thing out there and then people, I think one of the things that's great that I like about Comstrips, like the company is we're small, like we're um, six people, but I think we really listen to our customers and like let them kind of help us steer the ship where we want to go. And so, you know, we have some ideas and things that we come up with, but a lot of our direction, I think, comes from just listening to our customers and listening to, to feedback that we get. That's wonderful. And your your products are made, are they made here? Did I read that? They're not. Or, so, uh, they are made in Sweden. Sweden. Okay. But your offices are based here. Offices are based here. Yeah. yeah. We're in, uh, we're in, uh, beautiful Newport News, Virginia, one of uh, America's most interestingly named towns. There's a dude named Chris, there's a u- university here called Christopher Newport University. And apparently there was a guy named Christopher Newport and he would bring the news to the people here. This is ah, the so they call okay. it Newport News. We're about an hour from uh, Virginia Beach. We're about three hours from Washington, D.C., kind of Southern Virginia, so- so- Southeastern Virginia. Nice. So one of my goals is to get back there to Virginia Beach at some point. So you don't use latex? Is that what I read too? That some people have a latex allergy? That's not a problem with these? They're latex-free, so you don't have to worry about that. The adhesive is reusable. uh, It's a super cling, so you don't have to worry about... So I I would say Comtrips, there's there's nothing in it that isn't somewhere else, but we've worked really hard. Like, Like I work looked at probably 30 different manufacturers before we settled on the one we're using because like we found, I found a really good one, but it wasn't latex free. I found a good one. It wasn't texture. And like most times you talk to like someone who's manufacturing like an adhesive and they're not worried about stuff like allergies, like like latex allergies, or they're not worried about things like texture. Like I'd be like, what, what kind of texture does that have? And they're like, like it's kind of got a texture on. So like, oh, send me some samples and look at it. And then we did, I had a small group of people that I that I trusted, probably about 25 or 30 people who kind of felt like the product we were in. We kind of tested everything kind of over and over again. But um, it's kind of a, a unique combination. We're the only one that has all these things because it's pulling from a lot of different places and we're just, I think, combining them in a, in a unique way. Okay. And you do custom, right? Did I read that? You do custom? Do. Yeah. So um, it has to be, it's a minimum of uh, 500. So you got to order at least 500 because um, we do have to to make it special. Yeah. And we've done a few of these now. Um, schools, especially, we've done five or six 
or schools, a um, couple of businesses as well. Um, so I think it's something that, you know, I think especially during the pandemic, you've had a lot of, you know, people who are working from home or kids that are doing school from home. And it, I think it's a nice gift because we we package them as well. And like they're, they come in like uh, small envelopes that have like inspirational or motivational quotes on them. So I think it's a nice, fairly wow. inexpensive gift that you can give to someone, whether it's an employee who's working remotely or a teacher giving to a student that kind of, I'm thinking about you, it's cool, they can use it. Um, and so I think that that's been the custom piece, I think is is really nice. And, and, and we can usually get those out to people in just a, just a few weeks. So. Oh, that's really neat. I like that. Um, now we have audiences in the UK and I don't think you ship there yet. Is that on the horizon? Not yet. Yeah. So we're, we're working hard. Like we, we, we want to be everywhere all over the world. Um, we've done a couple of test shipments to the UK and they either take a long time. They're real, so like, it's like one of those things like we, we're going to work to kind of get fulfillment out there. So I would say hopefully by the end of the year, um, we're okay. working on it right now. Um, Canada and the UK are kind of our next two uh, places we want to go. So hopefully by the end of the year, fingers crossed. Okay. All right, cool. Because one of our co-hosts is there. And uh, so we've got an audience there. Fingers so crossed. I'm sure they would like to try this. And always, really if there are people out there who, who who really want, like we'll we'll work with whoever. So if you're, if you're like, I really want to try these, but I'm in the UK, just you can email us. Our, our email is um, care at comstrips.net. And if we can make it work, we'll we'll find a way to make it work. But I, like, I know myself as a customer, like I know I think to ship to the UK, the cheapest we could make it work where we could track it was like twenty one dollars, and it's like it's a twelve dollar and fifty cent products. I, I don't feel uh, I just don't feel good about like personally like as a business, like, I just don't feel good about maybe we'll pay that much um, to ship it. So we're gonna work to get. Hopefully, you know, we can ship a bunch of them over there and someone can yeah. ship them locally within, within the UK to kind of bring that cost down a little bit. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. Okay, well, do you have anything else you'd like to share with us? I think this is great. I'm eager to to look into it for myself and my kids. And um, I, I think it's wonderful. And, and I think you're going to help a lot of people with this. Is there anything else that you would like us to know? No, I think just uh, thank you again for the opportunity to come on the show with you. And I think it's one of the things that you mentioned earlier is that I think we're in a society now and we're in a, in a place now where I think a lot of the stigma around mental health is is being worn down um, over time. I think it's something that, that you can talk about. And I think something like Calm Strips or, you know, I think it can help to kind of start that conversation. We've had customers reach out and be like, people see it on my phone, they ask me about it and they go, oh, that's something that could help me too. And I think, you know, sparking conversation, I think is another reason we did the designs the way we did is I, I hope people do, if they want to be seen, that they see them and that it kind of can spark that that conversation about what is it, why, uh, if you have it and, and, and kind of spark maybe a lo larger conversation about mental health. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, so we've been talking to Michael Malkin of Comstrips. And again, we'll have all of his information in the show notes, but the name of the website is comstrips.net. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much for your time today. Thanks. <laughs>